All right, here with Ellen Noble, who surprisingly just took her first C1 win, which is yes. still astonishing to me, <laughs> as you had quite a few other Palmares, including, you know, silver at world championships. So how does this stack up against some of those other wins? Um, I don't know. I can't really rank it, but it feels really, really good. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited, not just with, um, with the win itself, but just kind of with how today went in general. It was a really good ride um, by my standards. And despite feeling a little bit rusty, having not raced in like a month and a half, Mm -hmm. um, I'm, yeah, I felt really smooth and composed, so I kind of feel like I picked up where I left off last season at Worlds Racing intelligently and not uh, panicking at all. So yeah. that was a, that was a big feat for me today. It was definitely one of the most comfortable rides that I saw on the course. So this course was a good kind of combination for you. A lot of technical stuff, but then a lot where you could work with Magalie, who you battled with until what, like a lap and a half, two laps? Yeah, yeah, just uh, at the start of two to go, I kind of started to put the pressure on. Um, but I didn't, the one thing that I knew today is if I just kind of kept the pressure on a little bit, I figured I'd be able to establish a gap. So I didn't need to go out and go from zero to 60 and hit it really hard. I knew that if I kept the pressure on and led through the technical sections, I could maybe force uh, force a mistake, uh, which is exactly what happened going through. I guess what people are calling double trouble, it was that ride up 180 and then what was the rundown last year into the 180. Right. Um, going into that, I believe made a mistake and I was able to just get a little bit of time and I just kept driving it. And, yeah, I was able to get a comfortable gap. Um, I didn't need to didn't need to win by too much because it's all just wasted energy after that point with the race tomorrow. It was yeah. something that was I mean, somewhat of a factor. I can't say that I was like actively trying to conserve, but there was no reason to to keep pushing it. Yeah, for <laughs> with sure. the race tomorrow and show up drained. Yeah. So you had kind of a tough summer though with the concussions and all that. So could you kind of give us like the short version of the issues you had over the summer? Yeah, I was um. I had two concussions over the course of like three weeks, which was like super, super hard to not just physically bounce back from, but like emotionally because yeah. the uh, the concussions were really like the, the final straw for me. I was having a super hard time like was having like some some food issues, if you will, um, that I was able to kind of like get back on the right track. but. It was like, it was an emotionally taxing summer with, like I said, some diet, like a lot of dietary stuff mm -hmm. and then two concussions to boot. It just, it really felt like, felt like nothing was going right. Um, and that's the quick version. Yeah. Every time I was like, okay, no, I'm on the up. Things are going. No, I'm totally wrong. It just got worse. Right. So I was like, I'm over my concussion. I'm back on track at the Mont Saint-Anne World Cup. And I crashed really hard and I landed face first. I cut my face and I, uh, I hit my kidneys. I was fortunately okay, but I hit my back really badly and I couldn't walk for a while. And yeah, so all of that, um, kind of coming into the training for the season, I have to say I was pretty freaked out. Uh, I haven't had like a, I haven't had injuries like that right. before. And I mean, I'm pretty young, so it's like, that's like the first in a young career. So to be able to still bounce back and just focus super hard for the last four weeks on, three weeks on like, on just getting better every day, not trying to be perfect from the gun, but improving and, and not panicking and not getting another concussion. Uh, those are my objectives and I was able to, to nail those and I feel feel really good and I'm in a pretty mentally stable place right now and my relationship with food is great. So, Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> uh, speaking of focusing, so you're back on Aspire Racing for the third season and... Second. Oh, right, second. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I feel is, like you've been here. This is my fourth year with focus. Right. So that's where the... Yeah, that's where the confusion. I'm just so used to you being around. I, I can't know. imagine. I can't <laughs> well, imagine Aspire I did, without I you. I did some. Uh, I did some like guest rides. Right. That first year. Right. So, right. Yeah. So how is it? How's the bike this year? Anything new and exciting? Or? Um, we're riding basically the same. The same bikes as last year. We're on the Focus mares. Um, like a couple of super, super, super minor changes, mostly with like the, the tubing, nothing really like drastic with the geometry. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of awesome for me because for sure. I loved my bike so much last year that I'm running almost an identical setup. Uh, 
I can't think of anything that I've changed on this bike. I'm running my hoods a little higher. That's like the, that is the most drastic change this year. That's um, great. <laughs> we have some like slightly different uh, tires that we're running, not pictured. Um, so we're running, yeah, like a slightly different tire from FMB this year, but otherwise like it's just kind of, kind of a, uh, you know, business, business as, usual. as usual and it's amazing it feels so good to just be able to come back to a team for year two know what's going on like I said pick up where we left off last year like kind of no big question marks as to like how do you talk to a mechanic or like yeah what does a manager do totally it's <laughs> so, like I just I was just able to come in and know like what my role was and uh you know what would be what I would be helped with uh yeah and having like you know consistent support by our amazing sponsors has been has been super super valuable and the the value of that is not lost on me going into this season yeah and you guys are back to this sort of uh, almost retro rafa focus kit which i have to talk about because i know you and i know that that's been the kit that you wanted to wear yeah yeah it's um it's something that i've been like meaning to i wanted to give like a thoughtful post about it because it does mean so much to me uh when i was like 15 and getting into cyclocross as what was then Rafa Focus was the team that I wanted to be on. It was like, I saw I saw the riders that were on the team then, Jeremy and Gabby and Julie, and I was like, yeah, they're who I want to be. Those are the riders that I'm emulating. That's like the dream situation. So to come and be on Aspire was amazing. Um, but then to get to race in the exact kit that like that I saw and I was like, that's, that's where I want to go is is really 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 cool like I think about I think about the first time that I saw Gabby in the new kit and how how amazing it was or like thinking about cheering for Jeremy with Jay Powell's number one written on, oh my, written on my stomach with all my junior friends the day the day that he won uh nationals for the first time in that kit it's like it's just so iconic and there's like such a rich rich history with those stripes that to wear it myself uh it's pretty freaking cool that's awesome <laughs> yeah. did you just like stand in front of your mirror and like dance around it when you first got it Oh yeah, and <laughs> I have a lot of selfies on my phone. Last year we were doing clothing fitting with old Rafa gear, uh, so like the like the Rafa fit kits originally were like old Rafa focus stuff. So I have pictures of me then in what was like an old kit. I was like, Mom, I'm wearing the kit. So to not just be wearing like a you know an extra kit from several years ago, to be wearing one that has my name on it, uh, literally is is like one of the coolest things for me totally in my career. Yeah. awesome okay so with today's win yes how are you feeling with the next i mean tomorrow but then also the world cups vegas the rest of the season because i know you had some question marks going into today yeah i think i'm feeling i'm feeling good i'm feeling much more confident Whereas, like you said, there were a bunch of question marks. Like, my numbers going into this week were really good. Like, the last couple weeks of training, um, once I started, like, you know, really focusing on nutrition and, and recovery and stuff like that, um, my numbers were doing, my numbers were better than they've ever been, but I still didn't know if it would be enough. If I'd be able to deliver on race day still, and if I could get my, like, my head in the game. And so to come in here on a race that I've historically never raced well right. is a very good sign because I normally go up from here. Who knows? I have no idea where I'm going to be in a week, but I'm feeling much more confident. And, yeah, like I said, I'm in a, I'm in a very, like, stable, good headspace. So I feel like, I feel like I'm just ready to rip, and most of all, I'm just excited to, like, you know, find just how deeply I can suffer this year in those races and then come across the finish line and then you have to you turn off that competitive nature, but then once you get there, it's back on and you're just, like he's, uh, like Brandon said, crushing souls was the, was yep. the start line catchphrase today. All right, well, I hope you suffer quite a bit tomorrow then. Thank you, Molly. Anytime. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you.